Amigos, in this video I will show you three of the worst situations that I got myself into while windsurfing and I will also explain to you what I learned from every single of these situations and I hope you can take something from it as well and maybe you don't have to get into these situations or you can handle them a little bit better than I did. And by the way I'm gonna start with the easiest situation and the third and last situation that I'm gonna show you in this video is gonna be the hardest one. So you might be a little bit surprised, but the easiest situation is actually the one from the thumbnails, so the frontal crash that I had while windsurfing. And this happened in Tarifa, I think it was three years ago, and basically it was a beautiful day, like most days in Tarifa. It was sunny, we had some good wind, and we were this training group of maybe 20, 25 people, and basically we were training slalom every other day. And the special thing in this winter was that the foils became very competitive in slalom racing. So when before we all were basically on the fin as soon as there was enough wind, now half of the fleet at least was on the foil. And on that day I have to say everything went quite smooth. I took my big 132 liter slalom board, I took my 84 slalom sail, I combined all that with my 44 centimeter carpenter fin which I was very proud of and we went out and we had some nice training runs and in one of the runs that happened later that day the accident happened and it was completely unexpected. We were starting, going over the starting line and already on the line I got overtaken quite closely by a foiler and then we went down that first reach towards the mark and all the time of course I was already scared. What happens if somebody crashes right in front of me? And on that day I finally got to experience it myself. The foiler that passed me on the starting line crashed in front of me right next to the buoy and I only had maybe a second to decide what to do and I'm gonna tell you about that in a moment. So this crash was absolutely terrifying. I was so scared. I was under shock when I was swimming in the water and I just said, uh, sorry, sorry, are you okay? And I hope nobody got injured. And what I wanna do now is tell you guys what you can do if you get in a situation like this and how you can prevent at least the worst case injuries with quite some good chance. So as you saw, as the crash happened, uh, the guy, Martin, he's called, uh, he flew to the right and I, of course, tried to avoid him. So I went to the left upwind, which is almost impossible to do uh, when you're hooked and when you're on both straps. Um, but I managed to do that a little bit. So I avoided his mast and I avoided him. And I think that prevented the worst damages. And the next thing, and back then I didn't know that this is what you are supposed to do, uh, that I did was I let go of the equipment. I unhooked and I just let go of the sail. When I went into his board, I didn't try to hold my sail. I didn't try to still avoid it. Like half a second before the impact, I let go. And this is basically the advice that I can give to you guys. If you have somebody ahead of you and he crashes and you cannot avoid him or his equipment anymore, let go. Unhook, let go of your equipment. Because you will take off that pressure and your equipment will still be stopped by the other person's equipment, but with a lot less power. So if you're not sure if you can avoid the other person, let go of your equipment. And now guys, before we get into the next situation, if you're new to this channel, feel free to subscribe. Basically, I'm producing new videos every week, tutorials, video blogs, videos like these. And guys, tell me some of your most dangerous and worst situations down below in the comments. And I'm sure a lot of other persons will enjoy reading your stories too. So coming to the next situation, my German followers will already know this video because it actually happened this year. So it was basically another beautiful day in Tarifa. As you can see, a lot of bad stuff happens in Tarifa. And I was hanging out with my friend Chris and Niels also joined the party. And we were looking at the water and thinking, hmm, it's quite a lot of waves today. So we walked to the harbor and we saw the flat side and then we looked to the other side and we saw the super wavy side and we all felt a little bit 
you know, not so well, everybody felt a little bit sick. And at some point, as it usually is, when three guys are hanging out, one guy, sometimes it might be me, gets a stupid idea. So I got the idea, why not just go into these huge waves for a little windsurf session. And of course, as you're gonna see in a moment, I didn't know what exactly was gonna happen. So we checked out the conditions, everything looked nice. So I took my small style on board and a small, basically brand new 0.7 sail. And I didn't think too much. I just went out there and going out, I got super lucky because all of a sudden the ocean became completely flat. I got a nice gust and I thought to myself, easy. If it stays like that, I'm not gonna have a problem at all. But of course, this is not what happened. What happened is the following. I was sailing a little bit further on the outside and Niels filmed the whole thing with the drone and then the waves picked up and some huge sets rolled below me. And I could already feel that this situation might become very dangerous. But I kept sailing basically because I also didn't know what else to do. You know, the drone was up in the air. We were filming a little bit for YouTube. There were these huge waves and I also knew, okay, the footage might look nice in the end, but the waves kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And at some point a set came through that was almost mast high. So my mast that day was four meters and 50 centimeters high. So these waves were basically like houses rolling below me while I was windsurfing. It was an insane feeling on top of the wave. There was a lot of wind. When you went um, down from the wave, there was almost no wind. And after that wave, I was almost shaking a little bit and I knew, okay, I need to get out of the water because if the waves pick up even more and if it becomes low tide, then I'm in serious trouble. So what did I do? I went a little bit upwind because we had offshore winds, which was also extra dangerous. And I basically tried to sail back to shore with all my heart, just went straight towards the beach. And then the worst case happened right in the shore break. The wind completely died off because we were right next to Tarifa City and it's sometimes quite gusty and patchy and the wind was also supposed to go down. So I tried to water start my equipment and then basically the swimming session started and normally if you're in a situation like that, it is very likely that you break your equipment or at least you know, your mast or some battens, or at least something. But in that situation, and I don't know why, very often I do the wrong thing in these situations, but in that situation, I did the right thing. And this is also what you now can learn from this situation. How do you avoid that everything breaks? Basically, you place your equipment in a T-shape in the shore break. And you now might be wondering, what, what do you mean with a T-shape? I basically mean like an anchor. So maybe it makes a little bit more sense like this. So imagine the waves co are coming from here toward that direction. You place your equipment like this. This is your board, this is your sail. The sail and the mast is facing straight into the waves and the board is like this. And the board is probably not gonna break unless you get into some of these really huge waves. If it's like medium sized shore break, as you're seeing now, you're placing your equipment like this. And now every time a wave comes, you duck dive your sail. So you put all your weight on the top of your sail and you push your sail as deep as you possibly can into the water. What happens like this is if the wave breaks straight on top of your sail, it first hits the water that is now above your sail. And like that, you avoid a direct impact basically on your battens, on your mast and so on. And most of the time, if you do this, you avoid breakage of your gear. And of course, if the waves reach a certain size, you cannot do anything anymore. And also if you don't have the time to place your equipment like that, you can't do anything anymore but a lot of people are lifting their equipment above their head trying to lift it above the wave and if a wave is not a small wave anymore but actual big shore break this can go very wrong and a lot of times breaks your equipment and the second thing that happens if you do what i just told you is that the waves drag you in so in the situation i was in we had basically low tide coming and the current was going out. So I was being dragged out and with placing the equipment like this in an anchor shape, uh, the waves push against your board and drag you in. And this can help you, but in this situation, it didn't help me enough. So at some point I gave the rescue signal to my friends at the beach. Of course, never do anything like that alone. I also would never do something like this on my own. 
And Chris, who was still sick uh, with fever at this point, he jumped in his underwear into the floods and basically dragged me out of the water with my equipment. Yeah, I was fine. I broke nothing in my equipment. And in the end, it was a nice adventure. But in that situation, guys, of course, I was very, very scared for myself, for my health, for my equipment. But maybe with these tips for the shore break, you can avoid some damage the next time you go out in conditions like that. And guys, now we're gonna jump straight into the worst situation. And this situation is actually quite old, but at the same time, since the PWA on Sylt happened this week, basically, and you saw a lot of shore break, it still fits quite well, I think. And I also want to give you a quick warning. You're gonna see blood now. So um, you're gonna see some actual injuries. <laughs> you're gonna see me in the hospital. So if you can't see any blood, you might wanna skip this part. And since this is the last part of this video, of course, to not miss any of the future videos, then again, hopefully without any blood, subscribe to the channel. And of course, your stories and comments and questions below are very appreciated. But let's continue with the situation. It was Sylt, it was the German championships. And I think it was like four years ago or five years ago. And back then I was still competing quite a lot, you know, for myself. Nowadays, I'm not competing anymore. But back then we still had formula windsurfing. And I'm talking about the old school formula stuff with the big fin that the young windsurfers probably won't know anymore. And what we did was up and down wind racing. So you had a starting line. A lot of people were starting at the same time, like 50 racers. And then you went up to an upwind buoy. Then you went down. Then you had a little section where you went crosswind. And it was all very complicated sometimes to be honest and I was sailing upwind so, and I and I by the way don't have footage of that so you will have to work with my uh, face now <laughs> uh, or I might just put some other footage in here uh, so you can imagine a little bit more what it was like when we were going upwind and I was making a tack and I was falling into the water which to me happened quite frequently back then because it was 11 or 12 square meter sails and I just hated it. It was absolutely not my thing. Everything was way too heavy for me, but I fell into the water and I felt something on my foot. Then I was like, hmm, yeah, maybe I touched the fin a little bit. And I was going back on my board again. I, you know, took my sail up, kept sailing. I was looking down and I was like, oh shit, my board is covered in blood and my foot is open like this and it looked really 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 bad and i didn't know what to do so i sat down on my board um, and i just started screaming and again i gave the rescue signal and luckily kai paustian um, he was right around the corner basically so he sailed towards me and thanks a lot kai for making this decision because there was no boat nearby and he saw it he gave me his lycra i wrapped the lycra around my foot and then kai went to the boat the boat came to me the boat took me brought me to the shore already in the boat they were calling the um, ambulance basically the ambulance was waiting at the beach and this then was by the way looking like this <laughs> Leider ist er jetzt gerade zum Schwerbehinderten geworden. Äh, Vorsicht, 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 äh, Mario Kümpel kommt. Vorsicht, Vorsicht. And yeah, so the rescue chain worked quite well. Also only because Kai was right next to me. And this right here is the scar that I got from that day, by the way. And I cut basically everything until the bone. And um, so yeah, I got taken to the hospital. I got some stitches. It was insanely painful and you might be wondering now what to learn from this situation and it's actually quite a simple thing respect your fin or your foil back then i was a lot younger and i was in the middle of this competition you know and adrenaline was there and i was rushing a little bit with the uh, water start in situations like this it can happen that you touch your fin and these racing fins are super sharp so my advice for you guys is when you fall calm down at least for a few seconds. Don't rush too much. Because you might be thinking, it's over, I can't injure myself now that I'm laying in the water. But yes, you can, especially when you're racing with sharp fins, take good care. And if you are really scared of your fins, of course, you can buy yourself some wetsuit shoes, but that's not for me, I don't like that feeling. When stuff like this happened to you once or twice, you really get some respect for the sharp parts of your 
equipment and luckily I learned my situation so this stuff never happened to me again but yeah guys these basically were now three situations where I hope you maybe took something away at least some entertaining and some windsurf vibes maybe and as I said you can let me know your situations down in the comments below of course leave me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the videos subscribe to the channel to not miss any of the future videos and if you need any kind of windsurf equipment of course a little advertisement at the end you can check out our online surf shop the wind lounge we are happy to help you guys so hit us up it's linked down in the video description and i would say we see each other in the next video my next trip is to the netherlands maybe i'm gonna see some of you guys there and of course i'm gonna film all that so see you then guys bye bye until the next one